dee da dee da what a great day, what a nice day. Uh oh. Hi there. I came with a message from your friend, Danielle. Oh, Danielle? How is she? How is she? <gasps> Ooh, how can you ask? Just look at me. Well, you look sad. I am sad. Well, that can only mean one thing. Danielle must be sad. <gasps> She's very sad. Oh, I can just picture her. Oh, Danielle. So, so sad. She's such a good friend of mine, and I don't know what to do. Oh, man. I'm so sorry to hear that. Danielle is a good friend. You know, if she's sending you sad face, it must be something really awful. It is. I better make a call. Hooray! I'm calling God. Yay! She'll be, wait, wait a minute, what? Wait a minute now. You said what? Who is she call? Who are you calling? Well, God, of course. God? Shouldn't you be calling Danielle? I will, but first I'm going to call God. Well, why are you calling him? He didn't send you a sad face, did he? <laughs> no, he didn't. And honestly, I don't need to send one to him to let him know that Danielle is sad because he already knows. Then why are you calling him? Because if Danielle is sad, I wanna pray for her. God wants us to pray for those who are sad and need comfort. I want God to be there for her right now. Then I can call her and see what's wrong. Then if she's willing, I'll pray with her. Wow! You mean God cares about poor Danielle and her sad problems? Of course he does. God cares about all of us, no matter what's going on. Whenever someone's sad, or even when I am sad, I can pray for them. You are a really good guy, Joel. I'm trying to do what God wants me to do. Jesus said, blessed are you who mourn, for you will be comforted. I know that God can comfort my friend better than anyone. Great news. I can't wait to hear how Danielle's doing after we pray for her. Can we pray together? Sure, sad face. Let's turn your sad face into a happy face. Let's pray. Hello, everyone. Well, our memory verse this week is Ephesians 6, 18. Ephesians 6, 18 will be found in the New Testament of your Bible. Remember your Bible is broken into two parts, the Old Testament and the New. So we're gonna to turn to the New Testament and find Ephesians 6, which is our chapter and our verse 18. And that says, at all times pray by the power of the Spirit. Pray all kinds of prayers. Be watchful so that you can pray. Always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. Ephesians 6, 18. Well, what does that mean? God wants to hear from us. He wants us to pray. He wants us to pray for the things that we're going through, things that we, our family might be going through, our friends might be going through. Maybe a close friend of yours is moving away and you're sad about that. God wants to hear about that. And he's gonna give you the comfort that you need to figure out a way to keep in contact maybe with that friend that is moving away. He wants you to keep your eyes open to hear, uh, your eyes open and your ears listening to hear the things that are going on in, in people's lives so that you can pray for them too. Maybe you're talking with your, your grandma and she said, oh man, one of my good friends, she can't see her family right now. We're all dealing with the coronavirus and it's hard for us to see our family and friends during this time. So 
maybe God will give you a good idea, a way to communicate with them. Oh, maybe you could even use your craft time to make something for someone who can't see their family during this time. God wants to hear from us, whether it's sad, you know, maybe you're angry and you just need to talk to him about something that you're angry about. He wants to hear that too. Sometimes we're super excited and we want to share something with him. Talk to God. He wants to hear from you and he wants to hear the things that are going on with you, things that your family is going through. Talk to God whenever you can. Let's talk. Let's say our memory verse together again. Ephesians 6, 18, at all times pray by the power of the spirit. Pray all kinds of prayers. Be watchful so that you can pray. Always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. Ephesians 6, 18. One more time. Ephesians 6, 18. At all times, pray by the power of the Spirit. Pray all kinds of prayers. Be watchful so that you can pray. Always, keeping, always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. Ephesians 6, 18. With all my mind and strength 
series emoji prayers. Today we're going to learn that God wants us to pray for people who are sad. So I'm going to give you to the count of five to go grab your Bibles. I know that's super fast but I want you to move with lightning speed to go grab your Bibles. Alrighty, ready, set, go. One, two, three, four, and five. Alright, if you have your Bible, hold it in the air and say it real loud. I have my Bible. Good job everyone. Alrighty, well, you know, it's probably hard for you guys to imagine a time without cell phones. Some of you might even have a cell phone or don't have a cell phone, but you've seen cell phones on TV with your friends or your family has them. You've seen them. Most of you are probably haven't, probably don't even remember a time in your life without a cell phone. Some of you might have what's called a landline at home, which is usually a phone that's hung on your wall or sitting on your counter, but it's not a cell phone, it's called a landline. Um, but those of you who don't have a landline, you probably have made phone calls on the cell phone, you've probably done video calls on, your, on the cell phone, or even sent text messages on the cell phone. Maybe through your mom or dad, aunt or uncle, cousins, anyway, who's close to you. Well, you know, cell phones started out just like regular phones. You know, we use them to call someone and speak with our voice, voice to voice. And then they started to change cell phones. Cell phones gave people the ability to send a text message. And you can still call someone, but you can also send them a written message, text message. You know, text messages were sent sparingly at first. They weren't sent a lot. People didn't use them a lot until they became regular tools for us to talk to people. And with a language of their own. We call that language character emojis. Well, emojis is the word given to those smiley faces that are on the phones. Well, I shouldn't say smiley faces though because some of them aren't actually smiling. Some of them are laughing, some are crying, some are mad, some are embarrassed. Um, if, you can even, if you can think of an emotion, somebody's probably created an emoji for it. Even everything from the good old fashioned smiley face to maybe an animal or a leaf or even um, the clouds and the sun. Emojis are what's called shorthand communication and they tell us how someone feels about how things are going. Well, if someone sends you a smiley face, you know that they're happy. And if they send you a laughing face, they can think that they're thinking that something is pretty funny. Or if they send you a sad face, you know that they're, they're, they're sad, maybe not having a great day. Well, today we're beginning a new series on communicating with God in prayer. You know, prayer is simply talking to God about how you feel, talking to him like you would talk to a friend. You can talk out loud or you can talk quietly in your heart. Now, God's probably not going to respond to you with a text message or an emoji, but emojis can still teach us a lot about how and when to pray. Well, it all starts today with the saddest of all emojis, the little sad face with a tear running down his cheek. Well, here is what God's word says about those who are sad. So at this time, we're gonna grab those Bibles that you grabbed at the beginning of our lesson, and we're gonna be in the book of Matthew. Now, Matthew is in the New Testament, and that's going to be the very first book of the New Testament. So, if you turn with me to the book of Matthew, and like I said, it's the very first book of the New Testament. Remember, our Bibles are broken into two parts, and those two parts are, what was it? I, I couldn't hear you. One more time. Oh, the Old and the New Testament. Great job. Good memories. Alrighty, well today we're going to be in the book of Matthew, we're going to be in chapter 5, and we're going to read verses 1 
through 11. So if you're ready, turn your listening ears on because here we go. Jesus saw the crowds, so he went up to oh, he went up on a mountainside and sat down. His disciples came to him. Then he began to teach them. He said, Blessed are those who are spiritually needy. The kingdom of heaven belongs to them. Blessed are those who are sad. They will be comforted. Blessed are those who are humble. They will be given the earth. Blessed are those who are hungry and thirst for what is right. They will be filled. Blessed are those who show mercy. They will be shown mercy. And blessed are those whose hearts are pure. They will see God. Blessed are those who make peace. They will be called children of God. Blessed are those who suffer for doing what is right. The kingdom of heaven belongs to them. Blessed are you when people make fun of you and hurt you because of me. You are also blessed. You are also blessed when when they tell you all kinds of evil lies about you because of me. Now, the me that he's talking about is Jesus, just so you're, in case you're wondering. But anyways, you know, sadness takes a sunny day and makes it feel rainy, right? Sadness happens when we experience something, a loss of something, or disappointment. It happens when we get hurt, maybe we get physically hurt, we're running around and we fall and scrape our knee. Maybe we get emotionally hurt. Maybe one of our friends yells at us and it hurts our feelings. You know, sadness happens because we live in a fallen world. Sin and sickness and death all lead to sadness. And as long as we live here on earth, we will experience sadness. But there's good news. The good news is in the scripture that we read. We'll receive comfort when we are sad. Jesus says we are blessed when we mourn for we shall be comforted. Jesus wants us to pray when we're sad. And he wants us to pray for others when we, when we know that they're sad. Our prayers can help others receive the comfort that they need and even draw them closer to Jesus. Now, what's the first thing you do when you're sad? Do you reach for a tissue? Do you reach out for a friend? Do you reach out for your mom and dad? Well, when we're sad, we want to be comforted. And we, know, we want to know everything is going to be okay, right? The first person we should reach out to is God. No one can give us comfort like our Creator. And if we give our sadness to God, He will be right by our side. What's the first thing you do when someone tells you that they're sad? And what's the first thing you do when you hear that someone close to you has received bad news? Well, we want to reach out and comfort our friends, right? We want to hug them and tell them when it's going to be, that it's going to be okay. But we need to do one more thing. We need to pray for them. You know, when we ask God to give our, give our friends the same comfort, we need it when we were sad. God doesn't cause the sad things to happen in our lives, in our lives, but God can use those sad things to grow our faith and draw people to Christ. When we pray for our friends, we're not just praying that they'll be happy again, we are praying that they will find true joy and comfort in Jesus. We're praying that we can be blessed, we, like the Beatitudes say, so that we can praise God even in sad times. So when you feel sad, pray. When someone you love feels sad, pray. God wants to bless us in our sadness and give us comfort when we need it in sad times. God can use our sadness to grow our faith in Jesus. Remember, what we just read is in the book, of, in the Bible, in the book of Matthew 5. That section is called the Beatitudes. Those are the attitudes that you should be having, the Beatitudes. Well, let's close our time in prayer, and I hope you enjoyed this week's lesson. Dear Lord, we just thank you for this day and this time. We just, help, we just hope that you help us to feel comforted when we're sad. Help us to have wisdom and guide us to help those around us who are sad to, to be happy and comforted and know that you love them and you comfort them. In Jesus' name, amen. What a great lesson, guys. And I hope you'll use the time after our lesson to play the review game to, and to do your craft. Make sure you grab two cards for your craft and stickers and some of the words that we have put in your craft bag. 
And you can use those decorations to decorate the outside or the inside of your card. And maybe you know somebody in your life who is having a sad day or that you want to cheer up. Give them that card that you make for them and put, make that sad face turn into a happy face. Well, until next time, have a great day. Take care. Bye. Hello, everyone. Well, our memory verse this week is Ephesians 6, 18. Ephesians 6, 18 will be found in the New Testament of your Bible. Remember, your Bible is broken into two parts, the Old Testament and the New. So we're going to turn to the New Testament and find Ephesians 6, which is our chapter and our verse 18. And that says, at all times, pray by the power of the Spirit. Pray all kinds of prayers. Be watchful so that you can pray. Always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. Ephesians 6, 18. Well, what does that mean? God wants to hear from us. He wants us to pray. He wants us to pray for the things that we're going through, things that we, our family might be going through, our friends might be going through. Maybe a close friend of yours is moving away, and you're sad about that. God wants to hear about that, and he's going to give you the comfort that you need to figure out a way to keep in contact maybe with that friend that is moving away. He wants you to keep your eyes open, to hear, uh, your eyes open and your ears listening, to hear the things that are going on in, in people's lives so that you can pray for them too. Maybe you're talking with your, your grandma and she said, oh man, one of my good friends, she can't see her family right now. We're all dealing with the coronavirus and it's hard for us to see our family and friends during this time. So maybe God will give you a good idea, a way to communicate with them Oh, maybe you could even use your craft time to make something for someone who can't see their family during this time. God wants to hear from us. Whether it's sad, you know, maybe you're angry and you just need to talk to him about something that you're angry about. He wants to hear that too. Sometimes we're super excited and we want to share something with him. Talk to God. He wants to hear from you. And he wants to hear the things that are going on with you, things that your family is going through, talk to God whenever you can. Let's talk, let's say our memory verse together again. Ephesians 6, 18, at all times pray by the power of the Spirit. Pray all kinds of prayers. Be watchful so that you can pray. Always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. Ephesians 6, 18. One more time. Ephesians 6, 18, at all times pray. Pray by the power of the Spirit. Pray all kinds of prayers. Be watchful so that you can pray. Always keeping, always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. Ephesians 6, 18. Great job, guys.